Hey, what's going on, guys? Aaron here. So it's been a couple of days since I've made a video. I've been traveling. I'll touch on more about why I'm traveling so much and why I'm always in like hotels. And last year, I was in my van a lot. I'll probably make a video on that. I've just been avoiding it because it's kind of a long topic about why I'm traveling so much. I am looking for a place to settle down, and that's also going to be in the video too, probably that I make hopefully soon about that. But anyway, I want to talk about uh, Celsius, give you guys an update. It's been a couple of days since I've talked about it. Really nothing's happening, but I just want to keep you guys kind of up to date on everything, even though not much is happening. Then I'm going to finish the video kind of talking about Michael Saylor and Dave Ramsey. Both of them talked about Bitcoin. Uh, Dave Ramsey talked about Bitcoin like nine years ago, and well, he was wrong about Bitcoin. So first, I just want to talk about Celsius. Really nothing's come through the docket. We are waiting for the judge to officially confirm the plan. So right now, we are literally just waiting for the judge to submit a document that says, this plan is confirmed. So you'll remember that last Monday, I believe there was the confirmation hearing where people were presenting their disagreements or arguments to the plan. So that is done. Nobody can object to the plan anymore. So now again, we are waiting for the judge to confirm the plan, and then we will have what's called an effective date. That is the date that the plan for NUCO most likely will become effective. Now, there isn't an exact time as to when the effective date will be. For example, if the judge uh, confirms it tomorrow, will it be two weeks, three weeks, four weeks? I didn't find anything where it's like exactly it's going to be, you know, a month or a month and a half after. Hopefully, it'll be maybe a month or so if I had to guess. And 15 days before the effective date, we will know with pretty good certainty how much crypto we are going to get back or the percent of your claim that you are going to get back. I'm not going to go into that in this video. I've talked about that ad nauseum in other videos. So we'll just have a better idea of that exact percentage of your claim 15 days before the plan goes effective, also known as the effective date. So right now, we are literally waiting. There's nothing to do at the moment. It doesn't matter if you had a loan, if you are an earn, if you're in the convenience class, and if you are in custody, you will be getting out the next uh, disbursement of those coins latest by the end of the year, probably earlier if the plan is confirmed earlier. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about Michael Saylor and his company MicroStrategy, which is basically a proxy for buying Bitcoin until there's an ETF. Basically, people are buying this to have exposure to Bitcoin. But the price of MicroStrategy has gone up a ton from a low of maybe around 150. Now it's at $450. Obviously, there was a huge high at the peak of the bull market at around $1,300 or so. But from its low at the beginning of the year, it was again around 140 or so. And we've like 3x to that. So let me just play this clip. And then I will go to Dave Ramsey and show you who you should not have listened to regarding Bitcoin. So August 10th, 2020, MicroStrategies adopts its Bitcoin strategy. The experts called you a fool thus far. You're crushing everything. I mean, I'm looking at the list. Even Bitcoin you're crushing. If you're going to keep up with uh, the Magnificent Seven, you're going to have to grow your revenues and cash flows 20% a year or faster ad infinitum. What we did in August of 2020 was recognize that there's no way we're going to outgrow Google and Microsoft and, and Apple computer as a mid-sized software company. So we started looking to do an acquisition of a high growth digital monopoly of our own. And we realized that Bitcoin is like a high tech dominant digital network growing right. at 40 or 50 percent a year. And so we bought it. Uh, before I let you go, Bitcoin on a tear right now. Uh, what do you think and over the next year? What could be some of the drivers that take it higher? Look, uh, the supply and demand are in balance right now, but after the halving in April, uh, the supply gets cut in half. And after the set of spot ETFs come online, the demand's got at least double. So the only thing that's going to adjust there is the price in order to get the market to clear. And so I think you watch the spot ETFs and you watch for the halving and the next 12 months are pretty auspicious for the asset class. So a couple things I want to note. To start out at the very beginning of this interview, look at that smile on Michael Saylor's face right there. So this guy has been through a hell of a lot, right? He was basically doing these interviews with Fox and MSNBC and everywhere when Bitcoin was at sixteen, seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars, and now 
he is in the positive for all of his Bitcoin purchases. So props to Michael for putting up with this really, really intense bear market. Are we out of the bear market? You know, I don't know. Nobody knows. Hopefully we get enough coins from Celsius. So when the bull market happens, we can still really, really capitalize on that. And when Michael Saylor talks about the halving, this is the quote right here. After the halving, the supply of Bitcoin gets cut in half. So that's literally what the halving means. And he says, after the spot ETFs come online, the demand is going to at least double. So what he's saying is that the spot ETF, he believes, will increase the demand by 2x at least. And with the halving, there will be one half less Bitcoin issued every single day. So that is the power of the halving. If you are unfamiliar with that, I'll talk about it in future videos because it's very important to kind of understand how that works. But basically right now, there's a fixed amount of Bitcoin that's produced every day. And at the halving, it will be cut in half. So if the demand stays the same, then the price of Bitcoin goes up because supply is less, but demand stays constant. So before I go into Dave Ramsey telling you why Bitcoin sucks nine years ago and anybody who listened to this got wrecked, R-E-K-T wrecked, I first want to talk about the sponsor of this video, which is Aura. So Aura is your all-in-one security platform. It does everything from a password manager, protecting your identity, identity theft stuff, there's a vault where it can monitor personal information on the dark web. It does credit protection. You can also have it look at your transactions to make sure that there's nothing weird going on there. So I have this on my phone 24 seven. It updates all the time. It gives me information about how it removed my information from dark web websites. It also has an antivirus. You can do call protection. It's essentially your all-in-one service to help protect your identity online. So in crypto, I'll take all the protection that we can get. I love having these guys as a sponsor of my station. If you are interested, they are giving you guys a two-week free trial using my link, which is aura.com forward slash Aaron Bennett. You can also scan the QR code on the screen. Now, let's get back to the video. So let's talk about what Dave Ramsey said nine years ago about Bitcoin. He starts out by giving a little bit of a backstory about bank runs and about how the FDIC was put into place so bank runs would not happen. So now he talks a little bit about quantitative easing and about printing dollars. And remember, the idea of printing dollars was a lot more foreign to people nine years ago. This is well before, obviously, what happened in 2020. So he's just giving people some backstory on how the government can inflate the dollar supply. Now he's talking about what gives a currency value, basically what somebody else will buy for it or what somebody values it at. He does mention the Iraqi dinar or dinar. I got to tell a little backstory. So in 2011, uh, I heard about this Iraqi dinar currency. So I purchased like, I don't know, a few thousand dollars worth of this in 2011, should have bought Bitcoin. So he just said that Bitcoin is very unstable and looking like it's not going to make it. And this is, I believe, when Mt. Gox crashed. And the big quote is, he just said, it's a really good way to turn a million dollars into nothing. So there you have it, guys. Nine years ago, Dave Ramsey telling people to not buy Bitcoin. It's a really good way to turn a million dollars into nothing. And nine years ago to the day I'm recording this video, the price of Bitcoin was just under $340. So this is a highlight from nine months ago. Somebody says, I have 11,000 in crypto and what should we do with that? So this person, Angela, I guess she's the co-host, she says that Bitcoin has a horrible track record, so she would take it out immediately. Now, nine months ago, the price of Bitcoin was, I believe, under $20,000, maybe even its all-time low in this bear market. So that was a great time to crap all over crypto, Bitcoin. I don't know what she was holding, but it just says crypto here. So the issue I have with Dave is he just says that someday crypto may stabilize and someday it may have a track record. And then Dave says he would then put money possibly into crypto. Now, that just doesn't make sense. And the data shows that Dave is completely wrong here because even having a 1% allocation to Bitcoin, or if you want to say maybe the top five crypto coins, but let's just say Bitcoin, having a one, two, even 5% allocation of your net worth, which is very, very small, has a huge outsized return if you had that allocation. Whereas if you didn't, your returns would be much, much less. So there is a place for speculative high risk, high return investments. And I don't think Dave talks about that. Dave really talks about getting your emergency fund going, paying off your debt, paying off your mortgage. He's really talking to people who really need to hear it from the ground up, who don't have a lot of knowledge or investing advice and really need to be kind of handheld 
into getting their crap together. So there are other videos of Dave talking bad about crypto. This one from two years ago, you get the point. You compare him with what happened with Michael Saylor that I played earlier. And really, whose advice do you want to follow? And I really think they are talking to two completely different audiences. Michael Saylor is running a publicly traded company and his stock has done incredibly well because he has purchased Bitcoin. Dave Ramsey is talking to somebody that has no plan, has hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt, and is living way outside their means and needs to learn how to invest into a 401k and save up $1,000 as an emergency fund. So they are very, very different players with very, very different risk tolerances. Now, Michael Saylor has said things, especially in the last bull market, like leverage your house or sell your house or whatever to buy Bitcoin. And he got a lot of flack for that, especially when Bitcoin went from 64 down to $16,000, right? But now as Bitcoin is coming back up, maybe going into a new bull run and people are seeing their investments finally turn profitable, the sentiment is changing, especially with what he was saying. So guys, that is it for the video. Thanks for watching. I'll leave my link for Aura below. I would encourage you to try it out for two weeks. See if you like it. If you don't, you can always cancel but they are giving you the two week free trial using my link below, or you can scan the QR code on the screen. And again, with Celsius, I will keep you guys posted when the plan is confirmed and then when the effective date will be, and then when we will be able to know exactly how much crypto we will be getting back. So guys, till next time, talk with you soon and bye for now.